in Nigeria, hundreds of female children get pregnant in their teen years. Teenage pregnancy is often regarded as a negative occurrence in recent times due to social stigma and other adverse consequences like dropping out of school. According to the World Health Organization, every year, an estimated 21 million girls aged 15 to 19 years in developing countries become pregnant and approximately 12 million of them give birth. Lillian Wama was 19 when she became pregnant, a reality that would turn her life around. Fear, anxiety and worry became her constant companions. I found out I was pregnant when I was uh, in school, second year. I had very rough experiences. It was a very, very tough moment for me because I realized that whether I like it or not, my life has changed. And uh, because I, <laughs> I knew that I may not be able to control, you know, how my life turns out from that point. I decided to be a girl for as long as I could be, so I tried not to talk about it. I kept it a secret. I didn't talk to anybody about it. I was highly distracted. It was obvious that I was no longer concentrating in class. But I still went to school. I still did all my, you know, normal work, but it was really, really, really bad. It really affected my academics and um, you know myself as a human being because um, the way society uh, approaches or presents a single parent or a single mom or a pregnant girl <laughs> it's a totally different class you're disrespected you're insulted you're abused and you're supposed to get used to that all that because I mean, you put yourself in this uh, situation or you found yourself in this situation. No matter what the story is, it doesn't matter anymore. So when I eventually had the courage to go for the test and sit down to see the result, I pretty much knew what to expect. But I sat there just to be sure, just to have some evidence, some paper evidence. And uh, to go for this test, I had to buy a ring. Yeah. I bought a ring. I, I went for tests about five to six times and didn't have the courage to stay to see my result or to wait to give my specimen um, sample, blood sample, urine sample, whatever they wanted. And I was so naive at the time, I didn't know about pregnancy strips. Otherwise, I may have just done it in my bathroom, you know, without, because it was embarrassing coming out as a student to sit in a lab to be tested for pregnancy you know, when you're not married. So I didn't know about pregnancy strips. I, I had a very naive, um, I was a very naive uh, young girl then. Yeah, so I didn't know about that. And because I wasn't talking to anybody about it, nobody could advise me, okay, do pregnancy strips. I finally found the courage, got that courage, went, sat, saw my results. I, I wore a ring, I bought a ring, I wore it from Malam. And I waited for my result. When it came, I looked at it and I smiled. And the lady said, congratulations. I said, thank you. I got up and I left. Throughout, you know, when I stepped out of the lab, the first thing that happened to me was I was laughing and then I started crying. She kept the news about her pregnancy from her family for seven months. Lily says she couldn't face her mom. The moment of informing her dad was a tough one. So it was the point where the baby bump started showing that I knew that, look, if you don't tell them now, they're going to find out and it would be more embarrassing. So I had to call my dad and invite him to come and see me. So he drove nine hours down to visit me and uh, I broke the news. And uh, the first thing he asked me was, are you HIV positive? And I said no. And then he broke down in tears. He started crying. I had never seen my dad in tears until that day. And I was scared. I was scared because it was just me and him in his car. And then he drove off. You know, he drove me to my uncle's house to, to tell them that, um, to find out if they knew that I was pregnant because this uncle of mine lives in the town where my school was. So, and he handed me over to him when I resumed school. So I would go there every weekend to spend the weekend with them and they didn't know I was pregnant the whole time. 
So when he took me there, and he, he asked him, so your daughter is pregnant and you didn't tell me? And he said, ah, how? And he said, ah, yeah, she's pregnant. And you didn't tell me. And he said he didn't even know about it. So it was, it was, <laughs> it was devastating for everyone. You know, they also saw me as a very responsible girl and they were surprised. And I was in their house every weekend. So it was even really shocking. And this was a whole family, you know, wife, husband, and other relatives that lived with them at the time. So it was shocking to them that the whole time, you know, I was coming and they didn't know. So, but um, we all had to deal with it. And um, I made my dad promise not to tell my mom because I know that she's softer. I mean, she's my dad. It was difficult for him, but it would be more difficult for my mom. So, and um, being a woman, I knew that she would want to maybe move in with me or want me to come back home or she would want something just to make sure that her eyes are on me, that I am fine. So it's either she moves in with me in school or she takes me with her back home or they move me somewhere and she stays with me. Like she would not take her eyes off me until I have the child. That's the kind of mom I have. So I wanted to keep it away from her for as long as I could. So I and my dad agreed not to tell her until it was a date to my delivery date. So he brought her all the way down to where I was a day to my delivery date. And she expected to see me, but she didn't know I was you know, pregnant. So she kept calling me on the phone. Oh, where are you? I thought you'd be waiting for me already since I told you I was coming. I said, yes, I'm writing exams. And I, I was writing exams, but I had just finished my exams then, my second year exams. So I thought I was writing exams that I'll be back um, when I'm done. That same day, she called again in the night. I said, yes, I finished very late and it's risky for me to be on my way to where you are now. So let's make it tomorrow. And she agreed. But by morning, they already you know, invited, uh, invited the people who would break the news to her and all of that. It was mainly her siblings and uh, you know, people that she's closest to. So they came, had the meeting, told her I was pregnant. And I was scared. I couldn't face her. I wasn't even in the house at the time. I left. I went to the hospital. I stayed away, you know, for as long as I could. So when, when they were bringing her back to the house where I was, I was not in the house. And everybody was calling my phone. Oh, where are you? Where are you? I said, I'm in the hospital. They said, ah, what's going on? I said, I just went there to see the doctor. I'll be back. But when the doctor eventually saw me, he said I, I wasn't good enough to go home. So he kept me there through the night. And when they got the news, they all came to the hospital. My extended family, everybody came. So the doctor told them I can't go home that night. My mom insisted she would stay with me. So she, they brought her to my room and she saw me. Her eyes were swollen. She had a rosary in her hand. She had cried so much. So um, she looked at me. I greeted her. She didn't answer me. And then a few minutes later, she asked me, are you OK? I said, yes. And that was all. She said she didn't say anything again until about eight hours later when I was in labor, around 5 a.m. And she had to call the nurses to tell them I was in labor. So I didn't see her from that point. Uh, okay, before she left, she told me not to scream. That if I scream this once, I would keep screaming whenever I'm in labor for any other child. So that was the only thing she said, and then she left. They moved her to a different room, moved me to a different room. and. Um, the next time I saw her was uh, about three hours later when the child was born. And um, she was already carrying the child, so she was happy. And I think that was enough consolation for her because, I mean, seeing that the child was healthy and I came out safe, no complications, you know, normal delivery, because there was this thing about normal delivery, you know, so I think that was enough consolation for her. And um, although she still had crisis after that but I mean for that time she was fine. For a young schoolgirl, abortion popped up as an option. She had several fears for her future. I kept my child because I wanted to keep it. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to get rid of him because I knew from my background, from the kind of life that I, I have lived till that point, that if anything happened, I would not even think of getting rid of it. It was difficult you know, having to deal with all these fears depression, uncertainties, it was really difficult. 
After she told her parents, she found more strength to face schooling and expecting a child. Pregnancy-related school dropouts have become a matter of public concern in the world today. Girls who dropped out of school due to pregnancy usually never returned to school to complete the education after childbirth. The opportunities for social economic advancement are limited. Olanrewaju Jeboda is a school principal at Victoria Island Senior Secondary School. She shares how female students are expected to abandon their education should they become pregnant. They ask the boy to come back. The girl cannot go back because even during suspension, the pregnancy is growing. And you know, <laughs> it depends on parents that we allow for um, um, termination. It's dangerous. The girl could die. So it's the girl that is she always say, zip up, I'm not ready. When I am ready, I will be ready. So government frown about pregnancy, teenage pregnancy, because it's even dangerous. The Guardian Counselor Department of a secondary school is charged with the responsibility of counseling adolescent schoolgirls who are likely to battle issues like this. A teenager who is pregnant. I would definitely make her know the consequences of her action, the consequences of her action. I would give her various options. Definitely abortion is not an option. I would encourage her. She should have the baby. Abortion, like I said, is not, is not an option for her. And after having the baby, she should learn to abstain. According to medical science, a huge challenge with teenage pregnancy is the psychological trauma. Okay, so the medical state of a teenage girl who gets pregnant is classified as high risk. High risk because the chances of losing her life um, in course of delivering the baby is higher than the chances of both people coming out alive. So it's usually termed high risk. What high risk means that the attention is higher and the focus is higher. And of course, the delivery pathway would have to be modified or adjusted to fit that particular child. So it's not something to celebrate or give an applaud to, but if it happens, then it has to be managed um, very, very carefully. And so that means if her antenatals are gonna be, the regular antenatals, which are four weekly in the first trimester, for them, you can have as much as two weekly. And of course, there are gonna be regular scannings to find out the growth rate of that child and of course the medical condition of that child. And pregnancy itself comes with a whole lot of um, issues. So there is self-neglect. The child is uneducated, unaware. She doesn't know what to do as a pregnant person. There is parental neglect because our society frowns at teenage pregnancy or people getting pregnant before being married. And according to Lillian, depression and societal stigma are synonymous with teenage pregnancy in Africa. Because of the way society um, disrespects or uh, society represents the, the, the societal representation of a teenage mom, when a teenager finds out she's pregnant, most times because of fear and the kind of life that they, they stand to face if they are not strong enough to overcome it, some of us commit suicide, and the suicide rate is really high. It's high, and, and people are not talking about it. They're not talking about it because we're teenage moms and we're looked at as second-class citizen. I don't know <laughs> why, but if a normal random young girl commits suicide, even if it's because her boyfriend cheated on her, it will make it you know, to the internet and it will trend, and everybody will talk about it and talk about it from different angles. But when a teenage mom does that, you hardly even hear the news. We, we just move on every day, acting as if teenage moms don't commit suicide. But these things happen every day. They happen every day. And these kids are left, you know, either taken to the motherless baby home or abandoned with the parents or even taken back to the father if the father can be traced and abandoned there. And then a lot of us will hide it and sell the child, you know. Hide it, nobody will know you had a child, sell the child and go on with life. And so long as you do all these things and nobody finds out, you are the moral one. Nobody, nobody sees you as, you know, nobody looks at you in a way. But once you are seen pregnant, once everybody has seen you pregnant, they've seen the child, forget it. Except you stand firm and overcome. 
It's a struggle, serious struggle. So a lot of us commit suicide and um, last year I got news of three that committed suicide. I didn't know them personally, but I wish that I got to at least converse with them. Lillian has now moved to Lagos where she holds beautiful dreams of being married someday and building a lovely home with her husband. But the chances of dating and marriage for women who were teenage mothers in Africa are very slim, she shares. You are stuck between either settling for somebody that you don't really like, you know, or um, um, <laughs> you just settle. You just settle. Either uh, you're either choosing between a widower, a divorcee, a, a man who has issues with um, whose family, uh, you know, who has issues having a male child, you know, maybe in the family or something. So they want to adopt your child and marry you, so that if for any reason, they are not able to get another male child. Your child is automatically theirs. You know, so there are so many conditions. So your mind is conditioned to believe that, look, you have to settle low. You have to, you don't know if you will get some, a, a better deal. So there are always conversations like on social media from time to time, you see people post things like, um, have you ever dated a single mom? Will you ever date a single mom? Um, what do you think? And then people are reacting in so many <laughs> ways. As a single mom, when you go through such threads, you are, if you're not strong, you actually fall into depression. You know, because people just go all blunt. And I, I'm not saying anybody should paint it, but it, it's not fair to talk about something you know nothing about. Lily is now 27. Her baby Munachi is now a cute young boy. She finds joy each day, embracing not just her son, but her decision to keep the pregnancy to full term. Unlike Lillian, there are over 100,000 adolescent pregnant girls in developing countries who would think abortion is an option. Plus TV Africa went seeking the right answers on abortion from these medical experts. When is abortion an option in a teenage pregnancy when that teenager is honestly small for age? So you can see a teenage girl at the age of 13 weighing 30 to 40 kg that that teenager is even at risk and then when the baby is also um, um, abnormal of course when you do your fetal scanning you can find out that that baby is abnormal and will cause problems because the genetics is not even mature enough to allow for a right baby so that baby or that conception can be aborted but then um, the pregnancy can last till term if all of these are right you must remember that in recent times many teenagers look older than their ages and so they can still carry a pregnancy what i'm trying to say is that the only time teenage pregnancy teenage abortion or abortion in teenage pregnancy is allowed is when that girl is too at risk especially when her weight is not enough to carry that pregnancy or that pregnancy is already um, a genetic misnomer, then you want to abort the baby. And then if you check the consequences, for an example, delivering that child could cause what we call fetal fistulas, um, vagina urethral fistulas. All of these consequences are there in abortion. These are some things you must also check. Bleeding is one of the consequences in abortion. So it's not, it's not also a good option to just fall back on. Right, but when you weigh the chances of allowing that baby, that woman alive, then you want to try the abortion if she is too small for age to carry pregnancy. Uh, are there medical effects for aborting a teenage, a pregnancy for a teenage mom? Yes, there are. One of them is fistula, and that happens a lot in the northern part of Nigeria. You have cases where women can no longer this urinary incontinence. Um, it's called vesicle vaginal fistulas. Okay, another one is bleeding, postpartum hemorrhage, till, or post bleeding, post abortal um, hemorrhage till death. And you must understand that in teenagehood, blood volumes are not as massive as blood volumes in adults. So um, it's possible to bleed in the process of trying to abort a pregnancy. The third one is um, uterine um, rupture. You see, the, the uterus at that level is also friable. And so any instrumentation can rupture or penetrate and cause 
damage in the uterus so you also very careful about that the uterus are very friable and then of course the vaginal pathway is not fully established even though there was some degree of sex risk of preeclampsia that is hypertension in pregnancy and of all these you can see that teenage pregnancy poses a risk to the person both medically psychologically and otherwise okay am i saying that teenagers cannot have a normal birth um yes 80% it's been seen that 80% of them cannot have a normal birth except that teenager is on the big side genetically that's from from family history is on the big side if not from the initial you should just plan a csa um, caesarean section with nigeria's youthful population accounting for at least 43.69 percent of its almost 200 million population with women and girls accounting for 99.13 million persons as of the 2019 world bank statistics how aware are the teenage girls of teenage pregnancy teenage pregnancy from my own understanding then a teenager who is not ready to get pregnant if I get pregnant for me, I'm going to keep the pregnancy. Keep the child, tell your parents about it, and seek advice from a respected adult. Teenage pregnancy is when someone gets pregnant. Teenage pregnancy is getting pregnant at a teenage age, with like unwanted pregnancy, while after engaging in premarital sex. Are teenage boys also aware of teenage pregnancy? If a teenage girl gets pregnant, I personally think that the teenager should keep the child, but keep it, but give it to the appropriate authorities or people who are capable of supporting and raising the child. Then maybe they can come and collect it at a later date when they themselves are able to take care of the child. Proper sex education can prevent teenage pregnancy. Um, teenagers being taught to speak up when they've been sexually abused can prevent teenage pregnancy and parents being more supervisive of their children to prevent any form of abuse taking place can prevent teenage pregnancy. We catch up with a few Nigerian parents who say they would not abandon their pregnant teenage girls. Uh, if my child uh, come back home with pregnancy, I will feel bad, but at the end of the day, I will not chase her away. I will want to sit her down and ask her some questions about the pregnancy and some other things which I will know the next step to take from there. Come home with your pregnancy. You have to present the man that pregnant you so that I will go and see the person. So in a case, you will, you will follow the man because I didn't give my, my parents uh, unwanted pregnancy. No, abortion is not good because at times, some abortions at times may, may occur to maybe damage of the womb and some other things. So I don't think abortion is good for a teenage girl. As teenage pregnant mothers daily seek to overcome the odds, break the glass ceilings and achieve excellence across various fields, it would only be appropriate for families, community structures and government to come to the aid of more vulnerable pregnant teenagers across Africa. If not for anything, at least to meet the goal one, no poverty, goal two, zero hunger, and goal three, good health and well-being of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals.